McCusker. McCusker, yeah. yeah. And Suzanne works at the University of Washington Tacoma, as you know, and she is a great advisor in psychology, <laughs> and she's a wonderful person to talk to, maybe after you know the, the uh, workshop, and she's going to cover all the requirements you need for admission to the psychology program. So, mm -hmm. Suzanne, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> what I tried to put together is all of the information you need on transferring, declaring the psychology major, and then other interesting information, hopefully, that you'll find interesting about the program and a little bit more about what we do and what opportunities there are and that sort of thing. If you have any questions at any time, feel free, please ask. Um, and then we can certainly talk more, you know, at the end as well about any other things that you might have questions about. So, there we go. Okay, so your first question may be more about logistical. How do you get to UWT? Really, you have to meet some fairly reasonable admission requirements. Um, you have to have a minimum of 45 credits. You have to have intermediate algebra with at least a 2.0. You have to have English proficiency, whether that's through composition or perhaps the TOEFL or something similar to that. You've got to complete two years of world language and have a minimum 2.0 cumulative GPA. Now, the two years of world language can be satisfied in a multiple, multiple ways, really. If you completed two years of the same foreign language in high school, we will accept that. If you take two quarters of the same language while you're here, we'll accept that also. Or if you don't do it in either of those first two places, if you don't take your world language until you get to UWT, that's totally fine too, as long as you complete two quarters of the same language. That's actually a requirement that has to be completed prior to graduation. So even though we list it as an admission requirement, it's preferred that you have it done by the time you get to UWT, but if you don't, that's okay too. Um, the one thing that you may find that leads you to take it here is that you will have more opportunities for different languages here. At UWT, we only offer Spanish and Chinese at this point. So if you want French or German or something else, look for it somewhere else. It makes it easier for you if that's what your preferred language is. Um, step number two, really, is to apply. Even if you don't think you're ready, even if you don't have your AA, feel free, apply. If you meet these criteria, you're eligible, you will receive an admission decision based on your circumstance. So each application is individually reviewed. Um, and really, if you meet these minimum criteria, then there's no reason you wouldn't be admitted. Now, of course, that's no official guarantee. I don't speak for admissions or anything like that, but that's really kind of what their perspective is. Um, we are currently accepting applications for winter, spring, and autumn quarters of next year. Um, priority deadline for winter, I believe, was two days ago. Um, but as far as I have heard right now, applications are still being accepted. Um, if you are applying, if you're thinking of applying for winter, I would do it yesterday. I mean, as quickly as you possibly can just so that we can try and get everything going for you because that's a short transition period from when you finish classes here to starting classes right after the first of the year at UWT. It's very, very quick. So. Okay, so psychology is kind of one of those unique majors where it doesn't actually reply, require a separate application. So you don't apply to UWT and then apply to psychology. Instead, you apply to UWT and you're accepted and then you finish up prerequisites. Once you finish up the prerequisites, as long as you've completed all the courses and you've got the minimum 2.0 grade in each course, you can declare the major. There's no additional personal statement. You don't have to fill anything else out. You don't have to pay for anything. So prerequisites, you must have five courses. Your general psych, which kind of makes sense. Statistics, which is way better for you to complete here if you can because it prepares you to go into one of the important courses. Your two foundation courses, which are your 200 level intro to a particular subject. So you can see there's lifespan, abnormal, social, and then biopsychology are all ones that we accept as well. Um, if you do decide to do a lifespan or an abnormal, and you take both of the classes that are listed here, we will accept both classes, but only one will count towards a prerequisite. The other one counts as an elective. And that's because they want you to have a, ba a background in two different areas. 
So let's say you choose one lifespan and one abnormal, which is honestly the most common thing that students choose when they're transferring in. Then you've got a lifespan and an abnormal, and you meet the two prerequisites. Finally, you also have to have research methods, which here is Psych 250. If you complete Psych 250 here, and honestly, I think you'll see this repeat in another minute too, but save your materials because you will be using those materials in our second research methods course that you would then take at UWT. If you're not able to take research methods here, that's okay. That's not gonna set you back. And really, we just work it in with everything else and it's totally fine. Okay, so, okay, so I kinda got ahead of myself here. But what if you can't do everything here? It's still totally fine. You can be admitted to UWT as long as you meet the previous requirements that we just went over. And then as soon as you've completed the prerequisite courses, you can declare psychology as your major. What that means is you can come into UWT, you come in as what they call a pre-major student, which effectively means that you're undeclared. Once you complete the prerequisites, you see me or one of the other psych advisors and we officially move your major into psychology. In the meantime, not being declared in psychology doesn't prohibit you from taking psych classes. So if you're finishing up the research methods and you wanna take adolescent psychology at the same time, you can do that. We don't have any problem with that happening. You can also talk to a psych advisor anytime you want to. We don't have a, a restriction against that either. So to talk to me or one of the other psych advisors, you literally just have to send us an email or make an appointment with us. We will see you, so. Okay, so now what? You've gotten to UWT, then what happens? You complete 35 upper division psychology credits in the major, including our research methods two course. That's seven classes. What you effectively do are three classes at the 300 level, then two classes at the 400 level, research methods, and one final class at either 300 or 400 level, your choice. That's something that we can totally work on and try and choose classes that really fit your interests more than anything else. You also have to complete 15 upper division credits outside psychology. So these are kind of like your general education requirements. They can be courses in arts, film, literature, political science, history, sociology, those kinds of courses. Um, and really, most students end up taking those courses towards the end of their program and we tend to use them as kind of electives to help buffer if you have a particularly heavy quarter, we might throw in an upper division film class or an upper division literature class because you enjoy those and then make your schedule a little bit more bearable and easier to work through. Some of our upper division psych classes are listed here. So personality theories, adult development, psychopharmacology, the psychology of black women. Um, and really these are only a few of the three and 400 level classes. More of them are listed on our website which um, we've got later and we can always pull that up and look at it if you'd like to look at that too. So other requirements for earning the degree beyond the psych requirements? Of course. Like we talked, you have to complete world language. You must complete a minimum 180 credits. So if you transfer to UWT with 90 credits from Highline, you will then complete 90 more at UWT. Same principles apply, we do 15 credits a quarter, five credits a class, so your 90 credits would be basically six quarters. Um, if you complete more than 90 credits at Highline, we can work with that too, it's pretty easy. And obviously the opposite is also true. If you only complete 60 or 75 credits here, then we can still make that work to finish up at UWT. You've also gotta have a minimum 2.0 GPA and then meet residency requirements, which your advisor will go into detail with you on those when it's necessary. Residency doesn't always apply to every student. And so as it says, your advisor will help you with all this. So the residency and completing any additional courses tend to be some of our more frequently asked questions. So if you do have a question on something like that, feel free to just reach out to one of us. We can help you with that. Okay. So beyond classes, what else is there? Oh, that went out of order. Hang on, I'm sorry, let me back up. I totally hit the wrong thing. Okay, so 
one of the questions we get a lot is how do I do other stuff beyond just sitting in the classroom for eight hours a week or however many hours a week? Research is a definite option for you. So Dr. Perone, you can see on top, has a very nice smile and he's very friendly. He teaches a lot of the developmental courses. So if you're interested in developmental um, psychology, you can see he teaches lifespan imaginative play, cultural context of developmental psychology. He'll teach our lifespan psychology course, um, adolescent psychology, things like that. And some of the research that he's done has been focusing on managing attention seeking behaviors in the classroom. And then he did an internship with a student that was fundamentals and integration of counseling and dance therapy. Um, he also spent some time this summer in Costa Rica, a um, month and a half ago or so, and um, worked with Patch Adams and did clown kinds of stuff. It was really, really cool. Um, and then Dr. Lee is focusing on the effect of stress on health behaviors and then addictive behaviors. So one of his current research projects is actually related to smoking and college students. Um, and you can see he teaches health psychology, chemical dependency, and then the psychophysiology of stress, um, in addition to other courses like our biopsychology or psychopharmacology, those kinds of courses. He's very, very much the scientific side of that sort of thing. So he tends to have room for research assistants pretty frequently, so that's kind of cool too. Internships are not required for graduation. A lot of our students think they are, but they're not. They are completely optional, and if you want to participate in one, totally awesome. We'll help you do it along the way. Some of our recent, in, recent internships, one we had through the Office of the Attorney General, um, where the student participated in hiring and recruitment. And then St. Joseph Medical Center, where the student um, really participated in more of a counseling kind of internship. I don't know which student that was, but to be honest, I'm guessing they were looking, obviously, at more of that clinical kind of um, graduate program after they finished up. And then local elementary schools, um, psychology, we tend to have a lot of students who are interested in school counseling or being school psychologists. So that's kind of a typical internship that some of our students would take advantage of. And then one that I thought was interesting was a student did an internship at a local animal shelter, learning how human behavior relates to animal behavior, and then trying to explain cats. I don't know about you, but I can't explain cats, so if they could figure it out, that's kind of awesome. And this one's just kind of a hodgepodge. I wanted to show some of the things that we've done on campus recently. Um, you can take part in ASUWT if you wanted to. We have a psychology club, even though it kind of got cut off there on the bottom. Um, we have First Generation Fellows, which is a newer program to try and assist students who are first generation, um, because that is you know, the transition can be tough. Um, but then we have, you can see Hendricks the Husky there, and we actually just had um, our start of the quarter activity, so there were like involvement fairs and career fairs that are going on this week and things like that. So there's lots of different opportunities to do things and become involved, which is pretty fun. Okay, so then what about after graduation? Because you've gotten to the finish line, and now you have to figure out what that next step is. Our recent students have gone into, you can see there's a huge list here of those who've gone into graduate study. A lot of our psychology majors pair the major with an education minor and then go into the graduate program that we have at UWT, which certifies um, students to teach in K through eight schools. So we have probably 12 to 15 of our recent graduates in that program right now. Um, some of our grads are also doing masters in social work or social welfare, uh, master of arts in interdisciplinary studies, and then there's a couple students who are actually enrolled at UW Seattle doing their school psychology program, and another student doing the masters in applied child and adolescent psychology prevention and treatment, and then we've got um, the industrial organizational psychology, which is that student's at Seattle University, and the forensic psychology student is actually at John Jay College in New York, so that's kind of cool. And then some of the careers, um, finding our recent graduates honestly is kind of hard because sometimes after they graduate they kind of scatter. So I had to stalk them on Facebook and online to try and figure out where they might be. Um, but for example, one that I did have quite a bit of contact with, 
is now working as an independent living specialist. So she works with adults and teenagers who have developmental issues and then helps them to figure out how to live you know, individually as adults and function in the adult world. So that's something that she's doing just with a bachelor's degree. Whereas obviously if you were thinking of being um, a family counselor or a school counselor or school psychologist, you're gonna need more than just a bachelor's degree. But that's obviously not something you have to figure out right at this moment. You don't even have to figure that out right as you get to UWT. That's something that you can talk to us about as you start getting through the first couple quarters and then really figure out what area it is you want to focus on. Like you were saying, you have a couple of areas that you're really thinking about. This is where you have those conversations with us saying, hey, I want to do whatever after college. How do I get there? And that's where we look at these courses and say, ooh, take these courses, talk to this faculty person, and do these things. And then by the time you graduate, you're then prepared to go and do those things. So. Okay, so some of the helpful sites that we use all the time, and these are in your packets as well, so you don't have to necessarily worry about writing it down right now. The admission requirements for the campus is right up there at the top. Those are the requirements that we just went over at the beginning. So the 2.0, the world language, the intermediate algebra, um, the 45 credits, and the English proficiency. Psychology advising, um, that's where you can get to information about all the advisors when we're available and all that sort of fun stuff if you need an advisor. Your major requirements, which if you'd like to, we can look at those and I can show you what those look like as well. And then student organizations. So as I mentioned, we do have a psychology club. There's a bunch of different dance clubs. There's clubs related to various ethnicities. Um, there's all kinds of things. There's a bunch of different organizations that you could join if you wanted to. Okay, so if you want to contact me, easiest way at this point is email. I guess it's probably easier to say it's always email, to be honest, but send an email, you will get a response. And actually, if you'd like them, I brought some of my business cards with me as well. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about necessarily writing down the email address, you can just see it on one of these. Whatever's easiest. And then, these are the rest of my fellow psychology advisors. We're all a little bit crazy in one way or another, but you know, we're there to help. So if you need something, let us know. So after that, ah, questions. Thank you, yes, very good question. The classes, short answer, classes are prime time. So classes are between eight usually and three most of the time. Um, we have a few professors who will teach later on. They'll teach a Monday, Wednesday class at 4.15 or Tuesday, Thursday class at three o'clock. But on the whole, most psychology classes happen between that eight and three, Monday through Friday. Um, we don't have classes after 12 o'clock on Fridays. So Really at that point, if you're in a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, it's in the morning and you'll be done by 12.20. Um, unfortunately, the psych department really isn't set up for evening classes. Although psychology, more than any other program on campus at the moment, is using hybrid courses. So if it's at Monday, Wednesday, 4.15 time slot that we were just talking about, it meets in person on Mondays, but then on Wednesdays, it's online. Or another one of our faculty does a Tuesday, Thursday, where they meet in person on Tuesdays and then Thursdays she does everything online. Conveniently, that's also when she gives her tests. So you just have to be online during that same time period and everything's great. So it is a degree, we do have a bunch of classes offered in any given quarter. So it is a degree that you can complete within that six quarter time frame. Or if you wanted to try and do it more quickly, Psych tends to offer a decent amount of classes during the summer too. It's just that summer is condensed and summer is a little bit crazy, just because of our summer classes meet three days a week for three and a half hours each day. So it's a lot. But otherwise, yeah, psych, honestly, psych is one of the programs in which you can get through pretty smoothly. Most of our psychology transfer students who come in with 90 credits 
complete the upper division requirements that we were talking about, which is 50 credits, and maybe complete a minor, 25 to 30 credits, and then have, say, two to three, two to four electives left over. If you decided not to do a minor, then the courses that would have been for that minor then become electives. So 50 credits of required, 40 credits of electives gives you the opportunity to really tailor what you're doing because that's eight classes. You could create your own minor if you wanted to just by taking classes in that particular subject. Or you could gear up for graduate school and take a bunch of classes to make sure that you are well prepared for that. So we have lots of options. I think that's kind of the coolest part. What are the most common minors for psychology? Education, um, gender and sexuality studies, and sociology is coming up. Sociology is brand new as of this quarter. So that one is one that I expect to see the numbers climb. Um, we already have 17 students in that minor right now. And it's, like I said, first quarter. So that's actually pretty good for us. Um, there's a few other you know, random minors. Some students might be an American Indian Studies minor. Some students may have um, an applied computing minor. But on the most, for the most part, education, like hands down. It's pretty amazing that way. Yeah? What's um, the most popular, popular like, career path that the graduates are going on besides like teaching? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I hear clinical psychology a lot. That's probably the one in the most recent graduating class that we've heard most about, is that they want to go into some type of personal counseling practice. And so they're looking at those master's degrees or the doctoral degrees to try and get from point A to point B and, and make that happen. They have like internships at hospitals around here where you can go and you can like, like you had on there. Right. Internships are challenging because we don't have like a, a placement program for internships. And so an internship that you might complete, you do the legwork for which is the part that makes it challenging because you have to go approach somebody and then say, hey, can I be your intern? And you know, sometimes it's a little awkward and it can be daunting. Um, but we have procedures, basically, that we would follow to help you um, find a faculty person because you also, when you do an internship, you're not just at the site working with them. You're also coordinating with a faculty person on campus. So we would help you then say, oh, have you had classes with so-and-so? And can you get them to supervise what you're doing and help you put together the contract? Because you do a contract with learning objectives and what you're going to produce at the end to show what you've learned and things like that. Um, but yeah, internships honestly are great. And a lot of the students that are looking at going into grad school want research as well. But honestly, some type of that hands-on kind of experience, showing that you have the skill in that area, whether that's research or an internship, I mean, at that point, I think they're probably pretty equal as long as you have that experience. Thank you. That was a really good question. Well, thank you for answering. You talked about a uh, world languages requirement. Mm -hmm. um, so you said two years of it. Right. Should we be taking world language every quarter for our entire AA program? Mm -hmm. No. It's where the weird part comes in. So. World language says two years in high school or two quarters in college. So it's considered that one quarter in college is equivalent to one year in high school. So think of it that way. It makes it a little bit easier. So if you did two years of German in high school and you passed all semesters, you're good to go. But if you didn't, if you only completed one year of German and then you said, I'm done with German, and I don't want to go back to that, then when you get here, you wanted to take Spanish and you took two quarters of Spanish, that would be just fine. And that would be enough. So if someone is proficient in another language already, mm -hmm. because they immigrated here or they're an international student, how does that work if you don't take Well, if they're an international student, they get credit for, if they have completed through seventh grade instruction in that other language. So like you said, you were from Japan. Mm -hmm. so. Sorry to use you as, as, as an example, but if you completed through seventh grade instruction in Japanese when you lived in Japan, then the world language would be waived. Instead, you'd have to demonstrate English proficiency. 
So it's, yeah, it's a little convoluted sometimes, but then if there's a student who, um, we have some students who speak Russian, for example. We don't have Russian on campus, but Seattle does world language testing for all the languages we don't. So we've had students who've gone up to Seattle and taken Russian language testing up there because they speak it at home and they know how to read and write it and they pass it and then Seattle just says, yep, you're good to go and sends that back to us and we use that. So world language seems in some ways like it's a really, really tough thing to get through, but it's not as bad as it seems. And we're really pretty creative when it comes to ways to fulfill that. Yeah? So what about like any type of criminal psychology? Would that be like forensic? Probably more like forensic, yes. Um, and at that point, we would probably, because one of the faculty that we have that was closest to that left at the end of last year, we would probably put you in touch with one of our leading clinical faculty, because that would kind of be the closest and then we would work with you, like one of the advisors would work with you to then say, okay, what kind of program are you looking for? What, where could you find that program? And then how do we tailor what you're doing towards that? So I actually just worked with a student this morning who's interested in forensic psychology. And so she looked at a couple of programs, one of the ones at John Jay being one, um, and Fairleigh Dickinson University for college in New Jersey also has one. So we were just looking at that this morning and what they require is a bachelor's in psychology, abnormal psychology, and statistics. Oh, wow. Yeah, pretty easy, <laughs> really. So it's not, grad school and making that transition from undergrad to grad is really not nearly as crazy as you think it is. Yeah, it requires a lot, because then you're talking, not to be totally overwhelming, but GREs, letters of recommendation, another application, a personal statement, sending your transcripts, just like you're applying to go to UWT, basically. And it has a deadline. That's the part that really throws a lot of students off is that deadline. So if we can plan for that, we're good. Makes it really easy. So did you have a question? Because um, like let's say I did French at my high school for a year, mm -hmm. and then I decided, oh, I don't like French. So then I did a quarter of like let's say Spanish here. Mm -hmm. Does that count or no? It has to be consecutive years. Same language. So you could either take the quarter of French or quarter of Spanish. Okay. But yeah, they want that same language thing. I've tried to get them to take one year of German and one year of French, and no, um, it doesn't work. There, so does it have to be like consecutive years too? It no. Doesn't? Okay. No. It literally just has to be two, two years or two quarters of the same language. Okay. And how you do it is up to you. So if you took French one here, let's say a year ago, and you didn't get to French 2 until winter quarter of 2018, totally fine. And the bonus is, honestly, we're not looking for any particular grade in this either. So world language doesn't have to be the same kind of scary, like, oh no, it's math, or oh no, it's physics. It doesn't have to be anything that bad. Just pass it. Go ahead. I can see your Similar world's question hurting. To hers. Uh, <laughs> I took an intro class to foreign language, and that was like an amalgam of different languages. So that would not count? No, because it's not studying just one language. Not that you didn't get some benefit out of it right. for this purpose, no. They're kind of picky in that respect. Now, if you were looking at Seattle, UW Seattle requires three quarters. So that is the biggest, one of the bigger differences between us and them is that we don't have quite that same need for the additional language. So if you have it, great. If you don't have it, then Tacoma may be a little bit better than Seattle in that respect if you're not a language person. So what else? You look like you had a question. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so the internship, mm -hmm. do they like, if they get an internship, do they work for a whole year? Depends on the internship. So some of them could be, depending on how long you're putting in, um, some of them could be a year-long thing that you work 10 hours a week, you know, autumn through spring. Some of it may be that you do 15 or 20 hours a week in autumn quarter only. Just depends on what you find. So, can you sure kind of clarify how the number of hours you're working 
Yes, actually, let me pull up our website for that because it's way better to have the detail. How do I want to get there? Okay, so internships, this FAQ here is probably the best thing that we have, but talking about credit and hours worked, if you want a five credit internship, you've got to work 15 hours a week to do it. The expectation if you have a five credit internship is that you will then have 10 more credits on campus. So figure that you're probably in class about six hours a week, let's say, for those 10 credits. Then you've got to add that in, add in your travel time, all that kind of stuff. That would be some of the stuff that we would take into consideration when it comes to whether or not you do an internship in one quarter versus another quarter, or whether maybe you cut it down to a three credit internship, which is a lot closer to just 10 hours a week, and might be more doable, especially if you've got you know, commuting and you've got a job or two, and family responsibilities and everything else. So when we look at doing these, we really try and make them fit as best we can. We do have, you can see this list over here on the right hand side, we do have a list of some of the internships that have been sent to us. I haven't seen this list updated in about six months, unfortunately. So anything that you would find here, um, we would look at and make sure was still available you know, before you applied for it. Um, the person who posts it, our internship coordinator, does try and list what major she thinks would be the most appropriate for that internship. That doesn't mean that something that says like this one here, South Sound Magazine Designer Editorial, doesn't mean that a psych major couldn't take that internship. It just means that she, according to her rubric, that fits more with writing, communication, or arts, media, and culture. So this site is actually linked off of our School of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences page on this undergraduates menu here. So one of the other pages I linked to earlier was this advising page where you can see all of our friendly faces. We put announcements over here, and all about us. And here's the who does what. So if you're looking to contact someone and you're thinking of something that's not psychology, um, you're more than welcome to contact me and I can get you to the correct person, or you can reach out to them directly, whatever's easiest for you. Um, what we also have here there's a little bit more information. Um, we just looked at the internships page, but there's also this independent study page where we had talked about doing research, for example, um, but this also includes then directed readings and any type of thesis that you might wanna do. Psychology does not require any sort of thesis or capstone or anything like that. Some of our other majors do. Um, so like if you're a history major or a politics major, you'd be writing a 25 page paper to finish up your degree but psychology does not do that. So you might be happy about that. Um, this goes into the types of independent studies. And then this is honestly the best part of it. So how do I register for this? So this is really kind of what we were starting to get into where you have to find a faculty person. Honestly, I would rearrange some of this to say, first contact the faculty person because you wanna see if they're available more than anything else. You don't want to go through all the steps and then find that the faculty person that you think would be awesome to help you with this can't help you. So really, talk to that faculty first. But you're going to want to talk to somebody you have a relationship with. So any kind of this independent study, we usually say, you know, wait a couple quarters, get in, get used to being on campus because it's going to be different than being here. And then build some of those relationships so that you can go up to Dr. Crone and say, hey, Dr. P, can you help me with this? And he goes, Oh, of course. You've been in three of my classes. You're an awesome student. I'm more than happy to help you. Makes it so much easier to make this happen. Um, so you have your faculty member. You have to do paperwork. You have to basically put it all together as though it was a regular class. So where you walk into class and your instructor hands you a syllabus and says, hey, here's what we're doing for the quarter. This is you creating the syllabus. So it's definitely possible to do. It just requires prep. That's where that legwork thing comes from, is not only do you have to then pull together where you're doing the internship, but you are really truly defining that internship as well. Um, 
And then down here at the bottom, we have all the paperwork that's required for these. So if we were looking at internships, this is the kind of paperwork that you would end up doing. Your info goes here. The info where you're doing the internship goes here. But then here's these fun learning objectives. So the part in your syllabus, those first couple pages where it talks about what you're going to do and how it meets the goals and objectives of the psychology department, that's what this is. And that's what you and the faculty person and the person who supervises these, the internship all come up with this all together. And then you create an academic assignment. So that may just be a paper, maybe something simple like that. But it may be that they want you to do a presentation on what you've done. Maybe they want you to create something. That's happened too. So you define the scope of what all that means. And then at the same time that you're coming up with all of that, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I went too far. Timeline. Um, some of our other forms also require that you not only come up with the timeline to say, OK, by week two, you'll have this. By week four, you'll have this. By week six, you'll do. And then week 10 is whatever. It also requires a grading scale. And that's something that you then come up with with the faculty person as well to say, OK, if you have, you know, to be really simple, 90 out of 100 points, then that's going to get you a 3.6. That kind of an idea. All of this is built in, even as complex as it may seem at first glance, is built in to make it all work for you. And the cool part about psychology is that then if you do an internship, If you do an internship, then it can count for credit in psychology, which is kind of awesome. So coming down all the way down to here, under this additional advanced credits, this was the one that I said was the last psychology class. It's that last 300 or 400 level psych class that you would be responsible for taking. Internship directed readings or undergraduate research can all count in this section. It can't count in any of these other sections here, but it will count here. So like your question about doing an internship all year, if you get 15 credits of internship, five credits will count here, and the other 10 count towards your electives. So they don't go to waste. They still count towards that 180 credits that you need for graduation, and you get an internship out of it. It's kind of awesome. Quite possibly. We had one of the ones that I highlighted was someone who worked in HR and worked with them on developing processes to identify applicants and things like that. Yeah, totally could be relevant. Because that is something that is so close, you know, human resources does use bits and pieces of psychology all over the place. So yeah, if it didn't count here, it would still count as an elective. And that's where it gets a little confusing is because an elective we use in so many different places and in so many potential different ways. Um, like they call these elective lists. But that's not the same as an elective that you take to increase your credits to the 180. So it's a little weird sometimes. But you can see, for example, if we go to this, um, I can't even get them all on the screen at the same time, which is awesome. Um, some of these are newer courses. For example, um, just down here at the bottom, sports psychology is one of our brand new courses. It was taught for the first time this last summer. Um, 455 right above it, the immigrant youth development is another one that is actually new within the last year or so. Um, and then you get the fun things, um, where is it? Existential 410 is being offered in winter quarter for the first time in like two years. So I have some students that are really, really excited about that and some that look at it and go, oh, I can't do that. So there's something here you know, that you can find that would be fun and awesome. What's your class size? Small, which is awesome. Um, we have, generally, most of the site classes are li limited to 40 students. 
And so there might be a few more here and there. Um, we have this quarter, our mental illness across cultures class is actually up to like 53, but that's huge. That's way bigger than we're used to. So, and that's because it's half online. And so the instructor doesn't mind going over a little bit. So it works out. Um, would you like to see what classes we're offering in winter? Just as kind of an idea of what we have. Okay. Okay, so as you would expect, we're offering Psych 101. We're offering two sections of research methods. So this section is the same, and this section is the same. The difference between them is that one's restricted to freshmen and sophomores during our first registration period, and the other's for juniors and seniors. But that's the only difference between them. We've got abnormal two sections. And then another section of lifespan, infant child, which actually has not been offered frequently in the last couple of years. So we're expecting that that one, they'll probably have requests to go over 40 at that point. Um, social psychology, so our 200 level courses here that we're looking at, the cognition, the biopsychology, behavior motivation, um, lifespan, and abnormal are all our foundations courses. So somebody who wants to declare psychology, who's only coming in with Psych 101, could easily take two of these in the same quarter. And if they're eligible to get into T Psych 209 or Research Methods 1, could take all three psych classes in one quarter and declare the major at the end of the quarter. So we have variety to be able to do that. Beyond the 200 level classes, we've got our Research Methods 2, which is two different sections. And then we've got personality theory, mental illness and culture, stereotypes, prejudice and discrimination, sexual identities, perception, health psychology, psychopharmacology, and then you can see, I mean, it just keeps going. So we've got tons and tons of options here. Um, there are certain classes, for example, sexual violence, because of the faculty member will fill up pretty quick. Um, it's a tough topic and there are every quarter is somebody who drops because it is a very tough topic. Um, but the instructor is fabulous and that's why most people flock to the class despite the subject matter is because Dr. West is awesome. Um, immigrant development is another one that is offered late. So Monday, Wednesday, 4.15 to 6.20. Previously she's run that one as a hybrid. So she's had that Monday in class, Wednesday online, which is kind of nice, because you might not want to be on campus till 620. We do have issues with transfer courses, unfortunately, because courses that you take here, like we were looking at the prerequisites, um, the lifespan and the abnormal and on from there, our equivalency guide is all based on Seattle course numberings not Tacoma course numberings. So that what it happens is when your courses come in, that's why this note is here. So if it shows on your transcript as Psych2XX, which is how they resolve the numbering issue because our foundation's courses are 200 and Seattle's are 300, if they come in this way, we have to resolve it with an entry code, which just overrides the prerequisite. It's an extra step, but it allows us to get the people into the courses that need to be into the courses. So if you have questions on any of how any of your courses come in, so let's say you transfer in for spring quarter and you don't, you look at your degree audit and it doesn't have anything that you expect to have on it, ask, because we can tell you where everything is. It's just maybe that it's not in the way that you expect to see it. But that's not, that shouldn't be an insurmountable problem. It just requires a little finesse. Any other questions? So you stay a few more minutes after? Of course. Yes, you have a question. Yeah, absolutely. So that's an X 
excellent presentation. Would you join me, please?